Hey guys, so I'm back with another CK3 video, and today I'm using the more bookmarks plus mod, and with this mod, obviously there's more bookmarks. Today I think I'm going to play in 1204 and attempt to restore the Byzantine Empire. So immediately I'm going to marry a strong ally, which is going to be hungry. And looking at our position, we have quite a few easy people to take out it looks like. Yeah. It shouldn't be too hard to actually grow our little power base here. The only issue is is when it comes to Room and the Empire of uh, Nikea. I've never actually heard it pronounced before. I think I think it would actually be pretty easy to take out the Latin Empire too. And is this guy actually a historical ruler? He's like suffering. Oh my god, he is suffering, especially in this age. Alright, this is sweet. I've never actually played this mod before. Apparently, we just get this and we get a ton of claims so obviously i'm gonna take this we lose nothing from this so and i think immediately what i'm gonna do here is actually take out this empire here All right, there we go. And I think I'm also going to take out the Empire of Trebizond here. And there we go. Here's some other easy pickings I need to take out. Alright, so it looks like the Latin Empire is actually facing a tough war right now. I think I'm gonna hop on the bandwagon here and take back Constantinople. Alright, sweet. Obviously, I'm gonna move my capital back to Constantinople. I can't? Oh, duh, there we go. It looks like the Land Empire actually broke apart. So I'm just gonna gobble up all these little guys. There's that guy. Here's this guy. And I actually think I'm going to stop for now. Even though these guys are super easy to just kill immediately. Just because of my vassals are starting to hate me for offensive wars. Alright, I'm actually going to start conquering again. Alright, there we go. So I've noticed something that's pretty bad. These guys are massive, and they're about to take out the Ayubids, I'm pretty sure they're called. Which means that they'll be basically knocking at my door any second now. Oh, oh my god. And plus Temujin is still in power, so that means that he has like three more people to go through before it breaks apart. I don't know what's going to happen here. Alright, this is super annoying here. I need to seize this one county to form the, the Byzantine Empire. When I could easily just take this entire kingdom here. This is really unfortunate. I have to take this one province instead of taking all of this. Oh, actually it's two provinces apparently. Alright, there we go. So it's funny how succession works in this game. So this guy was my vassal, and he was married to this lady. And this lady had a kid with him, 
and she's my vassal. So I'm just going to kill her so it actually passes down to her because if I need all this land to actually form the Byzantine Empire again. Nice. Alright, and we're actually one step closer to not instantly dying from Genghis Khan, so that's great. And plus it looks like his son actually was a pretty bad person, so his realm's probably going to break apart pretty soon. Alright, here we go. And I'm going to kill the Sultan of Room here. He has literally a trillion allies that he can call on when I declare war on him. So, yeah, I just, I just much, I would much rather have him just be broken up. Alright, and we couldn't have done this at a better time. The Mongols are actually invading Room. So I'm just going to gobble up the little bit of land that I need here. What? That's... Oh, wait. Never mind. Alright, so we can actually restore the Byzantines, but... We have quite the... Neighbor here. Can I kill him? No. I guess I just have to pray that he doesn't declare war on me. Jeez. Yeah, he is pretty scary. Finally, it's time to actually restore it. Let's do this. Sweet. So I have to be actually pretty strategic here. I can't just be an idiot and declare war on this guy. Because if I do, I might be surrounded by two sides here. So I'm actually going to hold off on declaring war right now. Um, What I'm going to do, or what I've already started doing, is killing all of his good sons. So hopefully he gets like a really, really bad, terrible son who goes into like something terrible like intrigue instead of this guy who's learning because he'll live forever. So I said screw it and I actually tried to kill Gang um, not Genghis Khan, but his son. And I have a 95% chance of actually doing it. So let's see if it works. Of course it doesn't work when I need it. Here we go again. What a joke, man. Twice in a row? What is the percentage chance of that? Like, that has to be, like, very, very low. So I just did the math for that. So 0 0.05 times 0 0.05. That means that I had a 0.0025% chance of that happening. That's how lucky I am. You know what? Actually, screw this. I'm actually going to take out this guy. I don't want to stay here in terror waiting for the Mongols to declare war on me. Especially if it's someone like this tiny. Alright. So there we go. That's not the cool thing though. The cool thing is... Is that... The Mongols are facing a crusader right now. And they're losing. This is... This is pretty sweet. The knights are actually next up on my chopping block here. Oh man. So Basilius Michael the Eighth, I think it is. He was amazing, of course. He had really good traits. Our son. He's decent besides the fact that he apparently likes incest. Which is certainly something let's see oh god please don't make this guy inherit he not only did he somehow become muslim he also was a leper sadly the crusaders actually lost that due to attrition that sucks i'd i'd much rather have a crusader state to my right than a horde that probably owns more than one fourth of the world at this point <laughs> oh my god so Instead of the Mongols declaring war on me, it looks like the Bulgarians decided to do it first. For one county, which is super tiny. That I don't really care about. But, just because I don't care about it doesn't mean that I'm not going to fight it. I don't understand why I can't negotiate an alliance here. 
Oh, I can. Do that. With him. Might as well can't do it with her. Okay, how strong is the Kingdom of Italy right now? Not very. Not very strong at all. And his, and his liege in the, in the HRE is actually going to be against them. Jeez. I'm not sure what to do here. Hopefully I can kill the Bulgarians before, you know, the HRE actually arrives. Alright, there we go. Another Khan is dead. And instead of its capital being in, uh, I think it's called Karakorum, it's now in Anatolia, so that's pretty cool. And I'm gonna strike when the iron's hot and kill this guy immediately since everybody hates him. Alright, it's time again. How, dude, how? Nine. 0.05 times 0.05 times 0.05 is the chance of this. I'll put it up on screen to just show you the chance of this happening three times this game. Alright, let's see. There we go. And now we have a baby con. Hopefully this shatters his realm. I'm pretty sure that he's the last ruler. If he dies, I'm pretty sure the, um, it'll like shatter into like the Golden Horde, the Ilkhanate, you know, etc. And it looks like the Mongols are actually experiencing a pretty tough war right now. So while they're in this weakness, I'm actually going to take out the Bulgarians. Alright, there we go. Alright, so my plan worked. So now we don't have as much of a threat on our borders now. Thankfully. So now I can finally breathe a sigh of relief. Nice. So, it looks like the midget that I destroyed for the Kingdom of Bulgaria killed me somehow. So now I'm... What is that? Michael the... The ninth? I know this is the eighth, so that must be the ninth. <sighs> this sucks. I mean, he's okay. And plus he's married to this lady here, which means that we'll actually be able to get back Antioch as our holy site. So not everything's bad. It looks like the Bulgarians want to become free. I'm not going to let them become free. That was pretty quick. Alright, I'm going to take half a creep back here. There we go. I'm also going to take this little piece of Moldavia here. Nice. And I'm also going to take back this province here. That somehow the Golden Horde got. I don't know how they got this, but I'm just going to take it back. Finally, dude. That war was brutal. We finally won for that one province. So it looks like my wife was cheating on me with my court physician. So what I did is <laughs> I made him a eunuch. I don't know if I'm going to divorce her. She's also become Muslim somehow. Is the kingdom? Yeah. Oh, this is cursed. Nice. I can actually vassalize this guy. I'm going to do it, obviously. I know that I probably won't be able to vassalize this guy since he's a king. Yeah, look at that debuff there. Minus 100. Yeah. Alright, so I think my next move here 
is going to be taking back Egypt. We'll get in a ton of land if we actually win this, so. Holy crap, dude. That was a brutal war. I don't know how many people died there. It must have been over 100,000 people. Like, look at what I was facing there. Like, that's crazy. Oh, that feels so good. We can also consecrate our bloodline. Or con consecrate our bloodline. So I'm going to do this. It doesn't really do much for us, but it's, be but it's better than nothing, you know? Nice. And of course, in taking that much land, we have to face a peasant revolt. So let's do it. There we go. Plans right now for a conquest. Artists continue to take the North African coast. I don't know when I'm going to be able to deal with the Ilkhanate. I thought, that, I thought that they were going to fall apart like instantly, but since they converted to um, a Shari Muslim, like they, they basically will never fall. Here's some more land. And finally, I'm going to complete my conquest decree here. Nice. Alright, so I actually think I'm going to end this here. This is a super fun start to play as the Kingdom of Epirus and then reforming the Roman Empire. Not only is it historical, there's also like a ton of things you can do with it. I honestly wouldn't mind if this was in uh, vanilla, e like vanilla CK3 because there are so many different things you can play as here. The toughest thing, of course, is the Mongol invasions because like it seems like the less time that you have to, to actually prepare for the Mongols, the better they're going to do. And it's even worse that he managed to um, convert to um, a Muslim faith, because now he owns, like, all of these lands still. And I don't think they're ever going to, like, break apart. So that's kind of scary. Looking at the rest of the world, somehow this guy managed to hold on to his Iberia holdings. Frankia exists. Scotland took over most of England and somehow the Piast dynasty got on the Lithuanian throne so that's kind of funny oh and he's Muslim too but yeah if you guys want to see more like different start dates just let me know and thank you for watching